Welcome to ASAW Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious, boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We are expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to lead this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily direction and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise, and the blessing of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instructions, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ, encourage those who do not know him personally, and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at ASAW Community Church, where serving and giving begins. Jesus, you are the center of my joy, of my joy, oh. The center of my joy, Jesus. You're the center of my joy, of my joy, of my joy, of my joy, Jesus. You are, you are the center, you are the center, you are the center. Oh, of my joy, of my joy, oh Jesus, you are the center of my joy, oh, my joy, of my joy, my joy, my joy. Say thank you. Anybody know something about the blood? It'll keep you. I thank him for the blood. That Jesus, Jesus shed, He shed for me way back on Calvary. Calvary, it was the blood that gives me strength from day. Day. It will never, never lose, never lose its power. Yeah, yeah. The blood that Jesus shed, he shed. 
for me Way back on Calvary I know it was the blood That gives me strength From day to day It will never its power Oh it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day from day to day it will never 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 lose never lose its power oh it From day to day, it will never, never, never lose, never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. to the lowest valley oh yeah I know it was the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never never lose its power on this day, let us share in the Lord's Supper together. It is an experience because of the depth in which it represents. On the eve of his death, Jesus instituted a significant new fellowship meal that we observe to this day. It is part of our Christian worship. This is a remembrance of what Christ did for us. And it's a celebration of what we received as a result of his sacrifice. I ask each of you to take a moment to examine your worship, your relationship with Christ, and your relationship with each other. Look at what's going on in your heart. I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Let us pray. Our Father, which is in heaven, we thank thee. We praise thee for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross for our sins. We don't come to your table trusting in our own righteousness, but we are thankful for grace and mercy. We ask that you forgive us for our transgressions, Cleanse our hearts, renew our minds, and fill us with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24 reads this. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Also in 1 Corinthians, verse 25 and 26 of chapter 11 says, in the same way also the cup. After supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink together. Amen. Yeah, it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yeah, it was a blood that gave me strength from day from day to day. It will never, never lose its power. No, 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 no. It will never lose, never lose its power. I don't care wherever you go, it will never lose. It will never lose, never lose. Never lose, it will never lose, never lose, never, 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 never. You go. I don't care wherever you are. Oh, never, 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 It will never lose its power. Somebody ought to give God some praise for that blood. If the blood has done anything for you, you ought to make some noise right now. If you know anything about the blood, you ought to make some noise right now. Want to keep you. Won't the blood keep you? The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Anybody got the blood? Anybody need some blood? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The blood is all right, ain't it? The blood is all right, ain't it? The blood is all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the 
glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our kings rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, y'all say it. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, you say it. Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Come on, everybody say, oh, the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the song, let the songs of the Lord, come on, rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, oh, let it rise. Come on, everybody. Oh, come on, one more time. Oh, oh, hey, we gotta let it ride. We gotta let it ride. Hey, we gotta let it ride. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 we gotta let it ride, let it ride, yeah, 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 yeah. we gotta let it ride, we gotta let it ride, oh, oh, oh. of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of my King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, lift your voice. Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord rise. Let the songs rise. Let the praises of our King, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. Everybody say, oh, let it rise. Come on, everybody. Oh, oh, oh.
gotta let it ride. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We gotta let it ride. Let it ride. Let it rise, let it rise, let it rise, let God's love rise, let his love rise in your life, let it rise, let it rise. Let it rise, let it rise, oh, oh, let it rise, we got to let it rise, we got to let it rise, we got to, we got to, we got to let it rise, we got to, we got to, everywhere we go, everywhere we go, everything we say, we got to let it rise, oh, oh, let it rise, let God's love rise, let's God love rise let 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 god love That's okay, if it's from your heart, it reaches the heart. We don't worry about mistakes and wrong words because if it's from your heart. You're so amazing. Your love for me. It's so amazing Your sacrifice For me For every mountain You brought me through For every valley You used to strengthen me don't deserve your love, your tender mercy. If not for your love, where would I, where would I be? You're so amazing. Your love for me. You're so amazing, God. Your sacrifice for me, for every blessing given to me. For every valley, Lord, you used to strengthen me. I don't deserve your love, your tender mercy. If not for your love, where would I? I stand amazed at your glory. I stand amazed at your strength. I stand amazed at your power. So amazing. So amazing, I stand amazed at your power. I stand amazed at your strength, Lord. I stand amazed at your glory. So amazing, so amazing, so So, so amazing, your love is so, so amazing, so 
so amazing. Father God, we are so thankful for another opportunity to come in this church and worship you in spirit and truth because truly, Father, you are amazing. We're thankful, Father, for grace, and we're especially excited about mercy, not because we have been so good, but because of your mercy, your love towards us, Father. So we're thankful, Father, that when we look out and see a dying world, we know that because of our relationship with you, that we have a final place where we will reign with you in glory. So while we're on this side, Father, we're just here to, to build up other believers, to take what you have given us and share it with those who do not know you personally. So I'm thankful for this church where people can come and worship you. Thankful for the songs that have been sung. Thankful for the word that's about to be preached, that people's lives will be changed on this evening so that their tomorrow will be better than their today. Bless us now, Father, as we go forward in this worship experience. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 and amen. For God is truly amazing, and without him, where would we all be? But you got to know him. You got to know him to know that he's amazing. You can only sing that or receive that if you know him for yourself. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for faith. I'm thankful for reaching out and, and, and believing that Jesus died for me that gives me the ability to persevere in the face of adversity. It's because of faith. And if you can't, if you can't, then I, I guess you gotta, I guess you have to examine your faith because your faith ought to bring you through. So I'm thankful, Father. Thankful for the word. Uh, I am... Um, a lot of people know, and I want to just say this up front, that in May I lost my son, and I never posted anything about it. I never, I mean, I preached about it, and we talked about it, but I never posted anything, and, and I felt the Spirit of the Lord lead me to post some things, and I, I did four posts, and I had a, a lot of comments, and people text me and called and shared, because you don't know what people are going through. You, you really don't. You, you really don't know what people are going through. You don't know how many people are on the verge of anything. But one particular phone call came in and said, man, I never saw it in you. What a pillar of strength. And I said, no, dependability on faith. See, the more you know, the more you can deal with and conquer, but you have to know. You, you just can't pretend, you gotta know. And see, when you pretend, we'll know you're pretending because when the floods come, you'll drown. So I just got through because of faith. I, I got through because I knew where my, my life was anchored. Uh, the sad part about it is, sad part about it is, I believe my son was questioning his anchor. And that's what led me to preach on that particular Saturday. It's about choices. This relationship you have with God is predicated on your choice. So you can win or you can lose. You can blame or you can overcome. So many people talk about the devil. L listen, the devil can't have no power unless you choose. I, you know, that's why I don't, I, 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 when I hear it, I, listen, 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 I know that the devil is cunning. I know that. But if you stay in your place, God will defeat your enemies for you. So let me just stay behind. Let God face what I know I don't have the ability to win on my own. So, with that being said and done, um, we've been in Ecclesiastes and I'm going to continue in, in chapter two. Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate what you guys have brought to this ministry, Mr. Teddy Wright and Mr. Gerard Black. Thank you. I believe that Ecclesiastes, it, it just, I just think it's just a time and a season uh, for this. I just, I just do. Uh, I've already gone through chapter one, and we have established that it doesn't say per se, but we, we, we can, um, based upon writing, uh, believe that Solomon is the writer because he writes this throughout his life. 
One thing I know about life is you all, you, you and I both, if we get to a certain point, we'll be able to look back and, and have different experiences uh, as a young person, as a middle-aged person, as a senior person. And so he's attributed to writing this, but, but what I want to always emphasize is that his writing is based upon his experience, things he's gone through, and his relationship with God. And you can't miss that, you know. At a young age, when he was be given, the, given the assignment to be the king, he asked God to, to give him wisdom to lead his people. And God gave him that and so much more because what he asked for was, was not only complex, but it may have seemed simple in the request. But when you ask for something of that magnitude, there is an awesome responsibility that comes with it. Whenever you take an assignment, there's a responsibility that comes with it. So he asked for wisdom and he received it. But the success comes with excess. It does. Listen, um, uh, people always ask me why I never aspire to be uh, a famous in Hollywood because I understood what it took to get there and what it takes to sustain yourself there and I wasn't willing to pay the price. Because there are some things that comes with it. And, and Solomon was no different. Although he asked God for wisdom, as he ascended throughout his life and his reign, uh, uh, he was led astray. Uh, there's a company that you keep. You know, when you got all these women around you, there, there's some things you might partake of that you wasn't designed to participate in because of your position. Them, them athletes ain't that good looking. They ain't. Them athletes ain't that good looking, but, but, but when you know what comes, uh, listen, look I'm, a, look, I'm an old school cat. I'm an old school cat. I remember listening to a woman say, talking line, I'm, I'm, I'm not minding my business, she talking in the line, but I could tell she was talking that she was married to somebody with a lot of money. And so I turned to her and I said, so, so, so who are you married to? And she, she says, some guy, I don't remember who it was, but, but he was a famous athlete. And I said, you know, if you hang out with me, it'll be about you. And guess what happened to that 40 or 60 million he had? It went out the window. Because she knew being married to someone of that magnitude ain't never going to be about her. Something as simple as making that statement. Why? Because I understand what comes with access. Understand what comes with, um, and so, so Solomon, you'll see, he, he, he understood, he, he asked for something, and not only did he get it, but he got more than he bargained for. And sometimes you can be so successful in life that you are lonely, bored, and broken because you don't know why people are talking to you. I just heard him say that Elon Musk is worth $226 billion. That would make you crazy drunk with power. I, look, I see people acting a fool with a million. But Solomon said in chapter one, it's, it's all vanity. And then he says it's vanity of vanities and, and it's just dealing with earthly, temporal things. That's, that's what's going on. And this is what he's trying to enlighten us or warn us or, or share with us. And no matter what I do, you know what people always ask me, including in my post, uh, um, can, you, can you give people hope? My wife asked me that. She says, Rodney, when your last post, could you give hope? And it's hard for me to give something that I believe is in the truth. See, I believe telling you the truth, then you got to attach that truth to your life, and then you got to find the hope in the truth. Because I'm saying, wait a minute, if you're not going to believe me on truth, how do I tell you about this hope? And so it, it, to me, it, it's like, wait a minute, let me, let, me, let me tell you the truth. And in that, then, then I need you to begin to hope for based upon that truth. Because if I'm telling you truth, then I don't think you're living that particular way. That's why I'm telling you. And so Solomon, he, he tells us that in chapter 1 that generations will come and, and generations will go. And, 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 and what's it all worth? What, what's, it, what's it all worth? We, we toil under the sun. And, 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 and see, again, I'm telling y'all something, man. You better open up your mouth and talk to people. 
You got to talk to people who are in the word like you're in the word because I saw under the sun and I preached about it. But 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 guess what? Somebody else was listening and said, hey, man, under the sun is apart from God. You got to let people know there's a difference. See, when it's under the sun, that means that we're not in heavenly places. We're, we're still on this earth. And, and he's telling us that while we are here, these are some things that you're going to have to endure. So you are under the sun, but there will be a time when you'll be in heavenly places. But while you are here, you, you toil and it's, it's, it's pointless and, and it's, it's empty and you can labor all you want and you can toil all you want. But what good is it if you are apart from God? What good is any of this if what you are doing is not leading people to the Lord? What good is this if you're not leading people to Christ? What good is this if you're not building up people in Christ? What good is this if you're not standing for Christ? What good is this if there's no love in your life for Christ? What good? And I know, I know there are some dark days, but by golly, you gotta be more light than darkness. It has to be because I read this book and this book has so much light. So when I look at my life and, I, and I, I'm able to persevere, I'm persevering only because I have connected to the light. I've sold out for light because I've seen the destruction of darkness and that ain't pretty. I don't even comprehend sometimes how you can always wake up every day gloomy. So there's a responsibility that comes with truth and it cuts, but it makes you stronger. And then you understand that no matter what you do, if you are apart from God, it's fruitless. It's meaningless. And chapter one dealt with the vanity of life and the grief that comes with wisdom. So then we look at chapter two. That's what we're going to look at tonight, chapter 2. And I'm going to tell you the sermon title right now. I. That's it. Sermon title is I. Just it. I. That's it. I. The letter I. That's the title. I. Why? Because when you begin to read and see, you understand why it's entitled I. So, so let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 1 to 26. Yeah. 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 Verses 1 to 26. The first one says, What? I said to myself, Now listen, this is a man who has reached the highest level in the land. And he's now conveying to us all that that entails. He says, I said to myself, come on, let's try pleasure. Because remember in chapter one, he was seeking and searching. And he said it's all vanity and wisdom is grief. And so now he has to go through the roll call because he's what? Trying to find what we've all been trying to find, the meaning of life. So he says, I said to myself, come on, let's try pleasure. Let's look for the good things in life. But I found that, that, that this too was meaningless. So I said, laughter is silly. What good does it do to seek pleasure? What, what he's saying, what, what good is this? Because aren't we always trying to find something? After much thought, who again, I decided to cheer myself with wine. Oh my gosh. Well, well you know. And while still seeking wisdom, I clutched at foolishness. Man, he, he's going through the Rolodex right now. In this way, I tried to experience the only happiness most people find during their brief life in this world. Don't you, don't you understand that when you have tried to use alcohol and drugs, all it is is the mask or camouflage of a problem? So he says, I, I tried this too because some people think this brings happiness, but no, because as soon as whatever it is you try wears off, that situation is still there. I believe you should just go through the situation. 
also tried to find meaning by building huge homes for myself and by planting beautiful vineyards. I made gardens and parks, filling them with all kinds of fruit trees. Who, who's doing this? He says, who? He says, I. Let's go on. I made gardens and parks, filling them with all kinds of fruit trees. I built reservoirs to collect the water to irrigate my many flourishing groves. I brought slaves, both men and women, and others were born into my household. I also owned large herds and flocks, more than any of the kings who had lived in Jerusalem before me. I, again, collected great sums of silver and gold and the treasures of many kings and providences. I hired wonderful singers, both men and women, and had beautiful concubines. I had everything a man could desire. He had everything. So I became greater than all who had lived in Jerusalem before me, and my wisdom never failed me. Why? Because when God gives you something... <laughs> <laughs> Anything I wanted, I would take. Who, who would? He would. I. Look at this. He did. I denied myself no pleasure. I even found great pleasure in hard work, a reward for all my labors. But as I looked at everything I had worked so hard to accomplish, it was all so meaningless, like chasing the wind. There was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. So I decided to compare wisdom with foolishness and madness. For who can do this better than I? I'm the king. Who's the king? He's the king. He said, I am the king. So he's again seeking. He's again searching. He's again trying to find this meaning of life under the sun. Because again, no matter what you do on this side, if it's apart from God, it's meaninglessness, pointlessness. And so he says, he says, who can do this better than I? I'm the king. I'm the most powerful man in the land. I can have what I want. I can build it. I can plant it. I can take care of it. I can pay for it. I thought wisdom is better than foolishness, but just as light is better than darkness. This is what he says. For the wise can see where they are going, but fools walk in the dark. Yet I saw that the wise and the foolish share the same you mean to tell me there's nothing special about me predicated on the car that I drive, how much money I got in the bank, where I live? He says both will die. So I said to myself, since I will end up the same as the fool, what's the value of all of my wisdom? Listen, all your wisdom that you have or that you think you have or all that specialness that you think you are, that's only good down here on this earthly realm and it's temporal and God gave it to you in the first place and he didn't give you all that he knew because he's God. So he says both will die. So I had to say to myself, since I will end up the same as the fool, what's the value of all my wisdom? This is all so meaningless. For the wise and the fool, foolish both die. The wise will not be remembered any longer. This is bleak. I mean, he's, this is bleak. You know why it's bleak? Because all of us are aspiring to be in every position he talked about. Everybody's trying to get a nice house. Everybody's trying to get this. He's trying to get that. He's trying to do this. And he says, all oh, mean is why? Because they both will die. The wise will not be remembered any longer than the fool. And in the days to come, both will be forgotten. So I came to hate life because everything done here under the sun, under here, is so troubling. Everything is meaningless, like chasing the wind. I came to hate all my hard work here on earth, for I must leave, for I must leave others everything I have earned. And who can tell whether my successes will be wise or foolish? Yet they will control everything I have gained by my skill and hard work under the sun. How meaningless is that? Meaning my uncle wanted to save a million dollars and he did and he died and what did his children do? <clears throat> okay, okay, because he couldn't take it with him. You, you, you know the day you die that money, right? Okay. And, and, and all all of his sacrifice, 
All of his for, for, for not living life to save to have this million dollars. Who can tell whether my successor will be wise or foolish, yet they will control everything I have gained by my skill and hard work under the sun. How meaningless. So I gave up. Don't you understand that in life, the reason why so many people give up is in despair of because they could not actually come to a meaning of what is life? So many people are struggling because they are trying to find the meaning of life. And I'm here to give you the short answer. Christ. Christ, because eternity is far greater than 60 or 70 or 80 years, 90 years. Oh, how long did they live? My grandmother lived in 93. My great grandmother almost 101. But that's a, that's a good long life. But her eternity. So I gave up in despair. Question the value of all my hard. Anybody ever been here? Question all my hard work. Some people work wisely with knowledge and skill. Then must leave the fruit of their efforts to someone who hasn't. So, so, so let's get this straight. You done done all this work. You think you special because you got vineyards, cars, homes, concubines. You got all this stuff going on only to leave it to somebody. What? Some people work wisely with knowledge and skill. Then must leave the fruit of their efforts to someone who hasn't worked for it. This too. And then he says, it's a great tragedy, verse 22. So what do people, so what do people get in this life for all their hard work and anxiety? Their days of labor are filled with pain and grief. Even at night, their minds cannot rest because it's all meaningless. Let's go back to, let's go back. Here's the question. So what do people get in this life for all their hard work and anxiety, question mark. Their days of labor are filled with pain and grief. Leave it right there. I'm going to pick it up right here. I'm going to pick it up. New King James Version. Yeah. Yeah. No, there, there you go. <clears throat> I like to switch. I like to read the New Living Translation because it's easy to read. But, but let's look at what New King James Version said. Nothing is... Is better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. That's what it says. So, so let's, let's, let's just break that down. Nothing is better for a man that he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw was from the hand of God. Don't you understand that everything that's good in your life comes from God. It, it, it comes from God. Everything that's good in your life, your ability to do, your, your ability to live, it, it comes from, from God. And God is rewarding you based upon your faith in him. See, I, I, when I hear people struggling, they come to the church for help, but they never go to the church. They never, they never hear this. They never hear this food for thought. They never get this particular meal. They want the meal that's handed out, but I'm trying to give them a meal that will fill you over and over and over again. And eventually, not only will you be fed, but you can feed somebody else. So what's on the other side of this, this labor? He was giving us wisdom about here on earth and how we are toiling and, and we're laboring and he's labored. He is at the highest pinnacle of life. He's the king and yet he talks about despair when he can have anything he wants. So on this side, your labor, your labor, you should simplify it and enjoy the fruits of it because it all benefits you working because it's coming from him. You didn't wake yourself up this morning. He did. God rewards are external. They are not. No, no, let me, let me rephrase that. God's rewards are eternal. They are not temporal. The things of this world are temporal. So you got a promotion. That's great. But the promotion ain't getting to heaven. What's going to get you to heaven and for your accountability is what you do 
in the service of the Lord. And that crown you'll get. That crown is eternal. This stuff is, is temporary. We put so much emphasis on stuff that has no bearing. And the moment we die, it dies with us. So God rewards our eternal. These things that we're dealing with are, are temporal. So enjoy what God has blessed you with. And what you've been blessed with has been based upon your faith. See, he was still talking about I. Because it's what he had gone through. And based upon what he had gone through, he's trying to tell you, hey, listen, don't get caught up in this stuff because I searched it out. And I came to the conclusion that I'm going to die, the, the rich king, and the fool going to die too. Man, that puts a lot of perspective on it to me, you know. So, man, I, I'm telling you something. I, I don't want to ever be, no, I just want to be whatever God has desired, designed for me. Why? Because guess what? You two are checking out of here. But our souls should rejoice from the good that comes from following the word of God, walking in the light, observing his truth, and the prosperity that comes from him based upon you and your life. That's why you can't want what I have or I shouldn't want what you have because I don't know what, what comes with that. I, I don't know none of that. What I do know is what he's done for me, what he's given for me. And I just believe that if my life is an example, it's only attributed to him. Because I can't bring myself through this. I can't put the strength in me. It's the word from him in me that you see. Leading this church, I, I tell all my friends, it's been simple. It's been simple. Why? Because I ain't tried to do nothing but serve. I ain't going to try to do nothing but serve. You can't get in trouble with serve. I went to a church today. You know, they had the parking space. You walk in there, the picture of him, and all, everything is designed around him. Now, now I kept my mouth shut because they was paying me to be here. I kept my mouth shut, but I'm looking around, and I'm saying, well, golly, well, where's God? And all this? I see his picture on this wall, the picture on that wall, and, and, and the, the, the website is his name and everything. Everything is named. Listen, I don't need my name or nothing. You know why? Because I ain't in charge. I'm just leading, following instructions. I'm just trying to tell you how to, I'll tell you how the church can be. I'll tell you how the church can be uh, overflowing. Some people got to sit down and stop thinking that it's about them. Here's the king. He told you he had the ability to do all of these things. And what did it do? It, nothing but despair. He had grief because he knew a lot. And when you know a lot, you are held accountable. And that's why sometimes, I'm not saying all times, please don't send me no messages. But a lot of times people like to go to a church for a show. Because if it's a show, then there's no accountability. And see, they don't want to go where the truth is. Every time the truth comes, it's going to cut. But every time you heal, not only are you stronger, you're better. And you can weather those storms because truth will allow you to persevere in the face of adversity. So that's why I, I have strength. I don't have strength because I'm better than nobody. I have strength because I understand the sacrifice that Jesus made for me to stand. So it says, nothing is better for a man that he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good and his labor. This also I saw was from the hand. The hand of God. That means that even in his situation, he understood that everything that came his way was from the hand of God. To test him, to make him better. For him to one day write this. He couldn't have wrote this when he was the young king. Couldn't have done it. There's some things I can write now because I'm, cause I'm older now and I see some things and I, and I have learned some things. But, 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 but guess what? But God has always been there through it all, even my failures, even my mistakes, because he knew something. So God gives you everything that is good and life throws tests and you will only pass the tests based upon your knowledge of him. So stop saying the devil made me do it. Really? Really? Verse 25 says, verse 25 says, For who can eat and who can have enjoyment more than I? He already laid down his track record. 
He already laid down his track record of what, what he could uh, 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 live, how he could live, and, and things he could do. And at, 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 at just his spoken word, he could have had a mansion built. He could have had land cleared because of how powerful he was. He had gone into battles and won, and he captured all the spoils, and he had servants, and he had so many servants so long that they had them, and then he had women, and, and then that, that led to some of his problems in life because when you're dealing with people from different walks of life, eventually, I don't care how good you think you are, but the company you keep, that circle will eventually catch up to you. So all blessings come from the hand of God. This is his plan. This is his plan for your life. And once you acknowledge him, man, there's an enjoyment. There is an enjoyment. The things that we are doing are inspiring to, for, our, for our, our final heavenly destination. And we want to take as many people along with us as possible based upon what he has done for you, for us. And people are watching you because if you can't show no signs of God has blessed you, then ain't no sense in me being a part of that. I'm already struggling without God. Why would I struggle with God? And you are the example. So I, I like to always let people know, oh, I'm good. I'm good. His life, his life should be the best in a meaningless world if he understands he is working under the sun, he's a, but he's not apart from God. That's the key. Yeah, we labor here, but we, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not disconnected. We have to be connected. You have to be connected. And then when you connect, then you see the light. And I, and I feel sorry for people that run from truth. I feel sorry for them. And, and that's why he said in chapter one that that wisdom is grief because you know the outcome. I seen the outcome of some things that I said only if you had, I, the guy that I'm bringing to do the financial class, I told all my friends when we were 27, 28 years old, hey man, here's a guy that can help us set up retirements so it, when we live or if we live or God allows us to live, that, that we can retire one day, we'll have some money set aside. And everybody was young. They, man, I'll get to it later. And now they're 60 and 62, and you know what they're doing. They're struggling trying to figure out that 1557 ain't going to make it. Because it was the truth. So, let's, let's, let's look at verse 26 and we'll close right there. Verse 26 says, For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy. Let me say that again. because I maybe, maybe let, me, let me just say it again. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. Let, let, me, let me say that again because I, I, I'm just telling you because see I'm telling people struggling I'm, I'm tired of all this nonsense I'm tired of every time I turn around I get on next door app people are begging they need this my roof falling in my cat is lost my dog needs surgery all these things and I'm saying Lord I'm, I'm 58 I, I ain't never been on one of these pages and I'm trying to figure out am I, am I better than anybody no I'm trying to figure out well, what's the difference why why then, then, I, then you read this you figure out here is the answer to your problem. It says, for God gives. That means you didn't have to do nothing. You, he just, for God gives wisdom, but you got to ask. He gives wisdom and knowledge, and because you have wisdom and knowledge, there's a joy to a man who is good in God's sight. Some of y'all are good in Satan's sight. That's why you got problems. You might come here and prop yourself up and look good to us, but God knows your heart. It says the man is good in his sight, but to the sinner, look at this. This is what he says. He says, but to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting. You are a sinner. You don't even know that you, not only are you under the sun, you're going to stay under the sun, and then you're going to be under the ground, but you better change your ways while you have time. But it says, and, and he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. So basically, all you sinners are working for us. 
Let me say that again. All you sinners are, are working for us because you will never get a chance to experience because he takes it and he gives it to the people who are good. That's why I can't understand why people always get up and they're never ever happy about their life when God has blessed you in good. Oh yeah, there's some days you may have some aches and some pains, but overall you're good and it's good based upon your faith. But if every day is a struggle, you better check your faith because I declare I can't understand why everybody's always talking about being broke. You go to churches. We ain't got no money for that. We broke. But if you are a church and you broke, you ought to close down because God has no lack. So if you're lacking, either you're not following, your faith is shattered, or you're in it for the wrong reasons. We have had some trying moments, but we have never been without. Lights have been on, the doors have been open, and people have been blessed. Why? Because God creates and gives everything good to those who line up with him and walk in his light. God bless you. God bless you. Man, I just, I don't get it. I, 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 listen, I don't get it. And, and you know what? In the position I'm in, I don't have to get it. You know what I got to do? I got to preach it. You know what we got to do on Tuesday? Teach it. It's up to you to get it. The best advice I ever got. When you pass it to church, don't tell them nothing. Teach them everything. Got a problem with something, skip. Don't, don't, don't fight them. Teach it. Got a problem, teach it. I got a friend being called to a new church. I told him, teach him. You can't go in there and change mindsets overnight. You got to teach them. And some people are not going to be teachable. And guess what? They don't show up. But they will call you because they're going to need you. And the reason why they call you is because they know you got an answer. Yeah. I got kids. They don't listen. I talk about my kids because they mine. I ain't mad. You know why? I, you know why I can say what I say? Because I gotta help them. If you don't want me to talk about it, don't call for my help. That, that solves the whole problem. See, when I left home, my father told me. He said, "Look," he said, "If you can't make it, you can come back home. But you gotta knock on the door and say you was right, Daddy. I can't make it out there. I gotta come back home. I'm 58 years old." I ain't never made that knock. I ain't, I ain't knocking on that door. No, sir. I don't care where I got to live. I ain't, I ain't no, 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 no. Cause, cause see, you know what I didn't want to deal with? I, I didn't want to deal with no questions. I ain't want to deal with all that. Sometimes I question my wife and she said, I question you, you got a problem. I said, absolutely. She said, why you got a problem? I said, cause I'm in charge. Let me, let me say this. Listen, I said that today. That's why I'm halfway voice, I mean, horse because I performed today. I told him today. I said, I don't pay no attention to you women. I'm responsible for this. You took my last name. I didn't take yours. Now, the reason why I make the decisions because I can live with the decisions I make. If I follow your leadership and your choices, then somebody's going to be mad. Because if it don't pan out, I, I, I want you to fix it. If it don't pan out on my end, I got it. I take care of this. I made that choice. And that's why on that last note that my son sent to me at the bottom, I put it in my text. He says, Dad, I knew there were other options, but this is my choice. And the reason why he said it is because two weeks before he passed, I told him, I said, a man makes choices that he can live with. I ain't worried about what everybody else thinks. I don't, even when it comes to leading this church, I just listen to him. People can tell me what I ought to be doing. People to, I have had people tell me how I can grow this church. I just listen to him. I just listen to him. Because if I start listening to them and doing all those things, if it don't grow, who am I going to be mad at? I'll be mad at them. I said, no, nah, bro. I'm going to do what the Lord has instructed me to do. You know what he told me to do? He said, go to a place, set the foundation. I'm going to sin in my... And, and listen, I talked to Pastor Tills about this the other day. Pastor Tills was my former pastor when I was at KDC, right? We first started. I said, oh, man, to grow a church, all you got to do is two things. Preach a good word and get some good singing. People flock. 
call him. He'll tell you. I said, I said, Doc, remember I told you that? I did. And I said, I think God is making me eat them words because I said it with such conviction. I said, preach a good message, Skip. Get you some good singers. People will show up. I, 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 I declare it ain't many people can do what that man over there does. Okay. Okay, did y'all see when we had the ASAR voices at the anniversary that nobody ever put together until that day, 45 minutes? Did you hear what? Okay, we got what it takes. But God is doing something. I, I got to do it. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go sit down like I always do. And then y'all let them figure it out. I don't know. A lady said, well, how many people come on Saturday? I said, I don't know. I said, you better bring something with you when you come because it could be full. I said, it only take 20 to be full. 20 is packed. 20 is packed. And then people looking at me like, what's wrong with you? I said, look, look, payroll is met every month. <laughs> the, 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 the bills are paid. We don't owe nobody nothing. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody do something. What I'm just saying is, it's because, because people have lost sight of the church and the ministry. I talked to a guy. I said, what is your church doing about ministry? So that's the truth. That's the truth. I said, what's your church doing? So the, the response was this. Doing a whole bunch of ministry that don't make you a successful church. I said, it's not about being a successful church. It's about having a track record in the community. It's about having a presence. If we all do something in ministry in our community, then maybe we can help some of these kids. That's all. That's all. We're going to have some, some, some events coming up in the next uh, couple months. Why? Because God laid it on my heart to do that. Why? Because it's needed. And then we're going to go on about our business. Tuesday town halls every Tuesday at 7 o'clock. This week I'll be out of town taking my wife on vacation. So we will be doing it uh, online. Um, I don't even know if I should even just do giving no more. Because people that's going to give, give. Then somebody says, well, no, you got to always do it. I even had somebody tell me, again, it ain't in my heart to do it. They said, before you have the service, sit in front, get the camera on you, and ask the people to give. And I said, I can't do that. I, I don't even like saying my name. Hi, I'm Pastor Rodney Johnson. And here at Asaw Community Church, we need your donations because God has a plan. Do you want to partner with us? We're going to be a global ministry doing international. I can't do that. Hey, look here. Here's the deal. Give if you want to give. And understand that giving blesses you and allows us to operate. That's what it does. That's what giving does. Giving blesses you. And I don't worry about it because I know what we give. I know what we give. I know what this church gives. I know that God, and, and trust me, I was looking at the, the, the stuff from the anniversary and, and, and I had a number. I had a number in my mind that I wanted to send out to ministry this month. I had the number in my mind. And God kept on saying, no, send this. And I go, huh? No, did you see? I'm still paying for this and I got to do that. I said, come on, God, make this easy on me. I'm making it easy on you. Trust me. I'm like, all right. So I wrote the checks and I put them in the mailbox. Put them in the mailbox. You know, you probably put the little red thing up. Put the red thing up. They're supposed to take the mail, right? I come back home. The checks are still in my mailbox. They didn't put the new mail on top of the old mail, which made me say, I told you, God, that's not what I should have done. Let me go back in here and rewrite these checks. Because it was still there. That's what you would have thought. You know, but maybe I wasn't supposed to send it. But no, I went to the post office and I dropped it in. So anyway, all I'm saying, I'm saying all that to say this. Give whatever's in your heart to this ministry. And then God will lead us what we should do with it. And you can go right here, asawcc.org, and give online. Which is, to me, the most effective way to give. Um, the reason being because this company tracks all the giving at the end of the year. It's easy for me to get the, the giving statement to you. Uh, if you're here, you can give in the envelopes and place in the container at the end of the service. I want to thank everybody for coming out this evening. I, God bless you all. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to just worship you, hear a word from you, and that we will grow not only as individuals but as a church collectively so that we can be effective in this community and let people know this is how we're supposed to operate. We're supposed to operate in joy, in love, one for another, being concerned about each other. So bless us now, Father, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And thank you, LaDonna, for reading the welcome. And thank you for Jeanette for sitting in for Carlia. <laughs>